Andrew Siciliano has just uh, tweeted that Calvin Ridley uh, of the of the Falcons, their wide receiver, has been suspended for at least one year for betting on NFL games. Uh oh. Well, that's the right thing to do. Uh, how dumb can you be? I know. I mean, really, how dumb can you be? I mean, if you want to bet, you can bet on anything now. You can bet on anything. You have to bet on NFL games. And, and if you really had a Jones to bet on an NFL game, have a friend bet on the game for you. You're going to bet on it yourself to the point that they have enough information to suspend you for a year. What a That's what a, a dunce! That is, and believe me, Michael, they drummed it into all these players' heads once they got into bed with these gambling sites of what they were allowed to do and not allowed to do. So for him to plead ignorance, that would be completely stupid. He, it is. He, he was told by his union. He was told by his team. Come on. And so remember, he also he took the year off for COVID, too, the, the previous year. Wow. What a Wait, dunce. Wait, so, so was he betting? So was he betting the year he was off? I, it could be this year. He, was, he, he played this year. He okay, had 31 so. uh, receptions. Didn't have a great year. Now, now, can I ask you a crazy question? Though? Sure. It's, I understand it's, it's stupid. I could get shouted down. Is, it, is, it really, is there anything really wrong with betting other games in football? Well, we don't know if he bet his own. I mean, you you probably have more information in that in that locker room than the general public does, so you're working at an advantage. So yeah, it is wrong. True, you, you do have some advantage, I suppose. And if he if he bet on his own team, I, I think a year is light. He, he uh, Andrew said he played five games this past year and then took off the remainder of the season. He probably this is where he's going to plead. He, he was bored that. Hey, I wasn't playing, so I, I I figured it was okay for me to do because I I I I didn't play. I mean, that's still stupid because I'm sure it was explained to him he couldn't do it. Because there's that insider trading, right? I mean, that's yeah. kind of like the feeling of it is, is that you have information the general public doesn't have. It's an ugly optic. Well, that's why Elon Musk's brother is being investigated because he sold a chunk of so- a stock. The day before Elon Musk said something on Twitter that drove the stock down. So, I mean, they're just assuming, well, they're brothers. They talk. He has insider information. Hmm. What a mess. And let's not forget, too, I'm reminded by Dan Grasso that really missed most of the year for what they called mental health issues. So I don't know what exactly will be his excuse, but. So real quick. So he missed. a lot going on there. So he missed two years ago. For COVID. For COVID. Mm-hmm. Then this past year, he played five games. And then no, he did off. play for COVID. I misunderstood. He missed last year for, for the mental issues. So he okay. played during COVID, but he only played five games this five year. Five games and then mental health issues are, 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 that he took off for the rest of the year. And now he'll be suspended. And according to the statement from the NFL, he'll be eligible to try to get reinstated February 15th, 2023. I'll tell you what, I hate to say it. I mean, and, and gambling ads are a big part of our show. Uh, they've been... Very generous in supporting our show, but this is the first of many. Uh, the NFL is in partnership with seven different betting sites. Do you, you think that this is going to go away? It's only going to become more prevalent. What, well, gamblers players betting be more prevalent. Yeah, I think so. No, they, I, I just think Ridley's just. No, I think you're going to see more of it. Well, but, because, but look what you're risking. He's not going to miss a year. I know, but not, it's on your phone now. You don't have to go to like some back alley with a bookie. No, but, well, but you you deserve it. Yeah, you do deserve it. No, you it. deserve it. So, I mean, listen, to any, listen, ask yourself this question. Would you want anybody on your team that is that colossally stupid? But don't you also believe that sooner or later you're also going to get you're going to get games thrown, either through officials or whatever? And, you know, we talked about it on Friday, and, and you know, you said, well, what kind of money would, would move them to do that? People could be in debt to people. Yeah, but, but you're in debt to bet MGM. Well, they're not going to come break your legs. No, no, no. But you could be in debt for other stuff, or you could be in trouble about other stuff. With drugs or whatever. Uh, I'm going to make this public. I'm going to make public that you're doing crack before the game if you don't. If you, I I'm would, telling you. I would think that these sports leagues would be on top of it enough to know if one of their officials or one of their players were running up that type of a debt on an app. Now, when it's illegal, you probably couldn't find out as No, no, easily. no. I'm not saying on an app, Don. You could get in trouble in other aspects of life. And then somebody who want because gambling is prevalent for everybody now, somebody could say, listen, I want you to throw this game or I'm making this stuff public. 
Forget about gambling debts. Just something trouble that you could be in otherwise. Right, but, but that that but that can happen in any walk of life, any time. Right, but now because gambling is so prevalent and everybody can gamble, it, it, it extends the pool of people that could do stuff like this or threaten you to do stuff like this. I just and, and I think that the the ones that are probably most susceptible well, but, are the officials in games no, because they don't get paid a lot of money. But what I'm saying is, before it was it was legal. You were going to get in trouble with with somebody from the underworld because you were gambling illegally, and you run up a big debt. Who knows what they'll do to get their two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? But but how are you going to run up a debt that where you're going to get threatened by DraftKings? No, no, you 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 misunderstand. I'm saying not the debt. I'm saying you could be in trouble for other stuff. You could be doing drugs. Your drug dealer could say, "I'm going to expose you to the world if you don't do this." But that could be happening even without. But now gambling. it's going to be, be. It could. It could. But now they can, because everybody can gamble now. It, it's something I think that that's a, that's a possibility. Well, I think there's. I think there's a good way. Of, what Michael's trying to say is that gambling being so prevalent and so popular and so accepted mainstream just ups the chance of everything that could happen with it. It's just bigger. Period. So everyone's involvement is bigger in gambling, and as a result, you will likely see more bad things that happen as a result of that. It's so out there now, and the, all the sports said, oh, it would, it would kill our sport if gambling was ever legal, and now they can't get enough of the partnerships. It's so, it's so hypocritical. I mean, there, there are quotes from Roger Goodell to Congress about how terrible it would be if, if gambling was ever legalized, and now... Every commercial, and they have seven partnerships. And now, last week we spoke about it. There's an active player that's actually an ambassador for BetMGM, right. Connor McDavid. But, but the NFL, spe- just specific to the NFL, I'm sure all the other leagues, but we know the history of former FBI agents that work for the NFL. They investigate things. They go into towns before teams get there, no, telling them what bars they are allowed to go to. So I would think any kind of player that would find himself getting in that kind of trouble, I think the NFL would be on top of it. I hope so. I hope and right. I would think the player would be able to go to the NFL and say, listen, I'm in a little trouble here. They're threatening to do this, and, and that the NFL might be able to do something about it. Now, the NFL said the betting occurred in late November when Ridley was away from the team. I almost have to wonder, is that a little bit of a harsh punishment? He wasn't with the team. He was away from the team. I guess I, I guess he could get well, better information than, than the normal person. Maybe that's why. Well, he's still collecting a paycheck. Like no, no, he's still I don't a know, member no. of an NFL team. I don't know if he collected it. He walked away for mental health reasons. Maybe he, maybe he did collect a paycheck. I'm not sure. But I mean, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't uh, put in retirement papers. You're still technically a member of the Players Association. Right, like so, I would I would think you're still considered a member of the NFL. Amazing, but I I really think this is an outlier. He was a guy that had issues, hadn't played because he was he he did not go to London for the Jet game. That was early in the season, so he probably was away from the team and figured well, I, I, I'm probably okay. I think this is an outlier. I, I don't think this is anything. Now, Peter, I don't know if you if deal. you remember that. Uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but when I used to cover the Yankees, you know, as a writer, you know, around the Oscars, we would actually bet on the winners of the of the races, and then Keep going. You know, we called it the Oscar gamble. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> No, you didn't do it as well as Don. <laughs> because I, because I had your back. We right. called it the Oscar gamble. Listen, <laughs> that's funny. That was genuine. <laughs> <laughs> that was genuine support for a buddy. That's right. It wasn't genuine laughter, but it was support, which is. <laughs> important. I, I I promised that you'd hear from Jesse Rogers. We'll do that in just a moment. But the Ridley stuff came up, which I thought certainly need to be addressed. Remember, at four o'clock. The first um, team official, owner or president of a team,